You know, the, the people who were most upset with this were the, the Darwinian biologists, the naturalists who didn't want to leave any room for design in biology or the natural sciences generally. Biggest supporters of the design inference when it was published was, was obviously my circle of friends, peers in the intelligent design movement. So Steve Meyer, Paul Nelson, Jonathan Wells, Mike Behe, Phil Johnson, and that whole circle. They were cheering this on. They were aware of this work as it was being uh, written up. I was presenting these ideas. Design Inference was published, the first edition in 1998, but I had been presenting these ideas throughout the, the 90s leading up to that. And then, obviously, intelligent design movement had a fair number of followers by that point. You know, so I think people who were skeptical of Darwinism were looking for a reliable scientific methodology for detecting design and using that to overturn Darwinism. I think these were the, uh, the, the this was the natural constituency, the people that were behind uh, the book. I think there were people also who just genuinely thought the ideas were interesting. I mean, you look at some of the early uh, reviews or uh, endorsements of it. I mean, there were some mainstream philosophers of science, scientists who thought this was, this was a worthy enterprise. But again, I think once it became clear that this method, you know, methods are in a sense neutral, right? I mean, you can apply them anywhere. Uh, and as long as you're applying it to the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, data falsification in science, forensic science, uh, you know, gambling fraud, you name it, uh, you know, uh, the, these ideas, this method works. But it was when that method was applied to biology, especially, that, uh, that people uh, got upset. And so I think, you know, the, the people who were most upset with this were uh, the, the Darwinian biologists, the naturalists who didn't want to leave any room for design in uh, biology or the natural sciences generally. You know, and it's interesting historically, I mean, there's a reason uh, there's this sort of allergic reaction to design in science. And I would say it probably goes back even to Francis Bacon, where he separated Aristotelian causes. He said, material causes, efficient causes, those are fine for science. Uh, you know, so what's it made out of? How does it operate? But formal causes, how is it structured? And then final causes, what's its purpose? Those are belong to metaphysics. And by drawing that distinction, uh, I think Francis Bacon moved uh, design reasoning outside of science. He himself was not a scientist, but he served as a philosopher of science. And I think that sort of thinking took hold that design is not really a scientific notion. I, I remember uh, just uh, talking to somebody just recently, and it was about, well, how is design uh, testable? You know, how, you know, is it, is it testable? And, you know, then I, I asked, well, you know, if, um, if you have a radio signal from outer space that has a certain pattern that you can't explain other than uh, by an intelligence, is that testable? You know, I mean, is, is SETI a testable scientific program? It's, they said, yeah, okay, it is. So it's, you know, I think the, the, the people who were most opposed, they just didn't want to allow design a foot in the door in the natural sciences. And, um, you know, and so I think they ended up going into contortions to try to deny the method itself, you know. And you have things as extreme now, I mean, and that, this was actually shortly after the book appeared, of uh, multi-universes, sort of uh, inflating probabilistic resources so that you could explain as a consequence of chance things that you know, normally you would just say, there's, there's no way that could happen, it would be way too improbable. But uh, so they would basically uh, use a form of probabilistic reasoning, allow it into the natural sciences when they would never allow it into forensic science or th areas like that. So, you know, it, people were really upset with this. You know, some, they, they just did not want these ideas to prosper and to have a place in the sciences. And uh, that's, that was my big claim, right? That, that this was, that 
these ideas, the design inference deserves a place in science that is as perfectly rigorous and respectable as a statistical methodology and that we need to pay attention to it. And if it tells us design is there, then so be it. You know? And so this is, this is an ongoing controversy. I think we, we push that debate much further in this second edition of the design inference. Mm -hmm.